five minutes. Because that's how technology works. <laughs> a. This is a love letter, along with E, K, M, N, and R. I have written you so many letters, each one ending with a love mark, and I have given you so many kisses, each one ending with a love mark, and I apologize for the appalled eyes that make things awkward at mass the next day, but my heart is your heart, which is why I'm ashamed, but I still haven't said the words consecutively. You've read letters and emails and heard open silences that reek love, but when it's my time to speak love, I stutter and stammer, losing all my grammar skills. I and you become too far apart to be connected by a heart, so instead of three words, I give you these amazing run-ons like, I love your hair and your eyes, and that dress is a new, it looks so good on you, dinner. <laughs> and I know, I know, I sound stupid, I can just see Cupid rolling his eyes thinking, at least he's good at math. <laughs> So many messages I have messed up for you. I, Stevie, wonder why you don't call me out, but still call me back with your own message of, I just called to say I miss you. I just called to say how much I care. And when I call back, I fall back on the same lines, a tape recorder switching between play and rewind. If you could read minds, the I miss you twos would not stand in for the truths I cannot tell, it should be simple. A fact of history. But my lack of courage has left you in mystery all these months, believe me, I've even rehearsed. But if I get to my worst, relieve me. Though, you should know, if this is any consolation, I strongly believe in ladies first. <laughs> I didn't mean you had no flaws. I meant the laws of love and of God that you followed were the same as mine, the sign of your laughter, of the cross, of the life you wanted to lead led me to believe in your perfection. And though I've never defined beauty, I now believe that its definition must include the scars on your knee and your bunion, or as we agreed, funion. <laughs> you are quick to laugh when at your perfection, quick to pick up the A cups and gaze longingly at a Victoria's Secret catalog, your skin, thick from being called Elizabeth, the sister from Pride and Prejudice, who was smart. But don't forget who played her in the movie adaptation. Kira Knightley. <laughs> Not too shabby being Elizabeth anymore, is it? And may I point out, based on my research, which was totally scientific and appropriate, <laughs> that her breasts were a work of art in parts of the Caribbean, literally. Every morning, makeup spent 45 minutes painting them with shadows to make them appear larger. You, however, can wake up every morning and say, at least these girls ain't got no paint on. <laughs> I am trying to match you, to catch your eye again. For you, I believed in unicorns, and fairies, and vegetarianism. <laughs> I want to be timely with presents and spontaneous with gifts, leaving you inside jokes like little treasures, pleasures to be found in your back pocket, underneath your pillow, in the mail. For you, I decided to live in a box, with nothing but a built-in camera and a microphone. Our shared home had the Skype ringtone as a doorbell and a mute button, in case one of us got particularly boisterous, usually me. We lived by two clocks, first six, then seven, thirteen, now fourteen hours apart, connected only by heart and high-speed internet access. In practice, it was difficult. When it rained, I hoped it wouldn't pour, or else it would lag. Now I am a master of piecing words together. I, Kai, you, okay, so we'll talk at seven my time, but you've got an enkai, which means we might be late, in which case we'll Skype at eight. You, 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 I love you too. You existed from the comfort of my chair. I enlisted for two years, maybe more, but damages done by distance are not easy to repair. Miss kisses, squeezing your hand, movie nights, the cold of a winter morning and the absence of your warm breath. Each one is a brick being laid. The days that pass, mortar for the wall that gets higher and higher, it is inevitable. The mistakes of the past and the uncertainty of the future make my lack of presence that, that much harder to take. We are beyond love, more basic more primal at the stage of need. If I could make your heart heed my words, I would do my best Reagan impersonation and call out to you, my love. Tear down that wall. <laughs> but you hate Reagan. That's another reason why you're perfect. <laughs> I'm not a handyman. I look like a fool with power tools. I have a chisel and sledge. Give me time to bring the wall down. It will give you peace of mind if you let me destroy the bricks as I go.
It's no mystery how my cat got diabetes. <laughs> 23 pounds, belly to the ground if he walks. Plus, my family does have a history. Grandfather, grandmother on both sides, broken eyes and kidneys, so I never got the idyllic imagery of a kid on grandpa's knees instilled in me. Not so recently, my mother asked me how much I pee. <laughs> I don't know. Normal amount? <laughs> just that maybe eating a pound of grapes every night before bed is not a good idea. Too much sugar, and we have a history. I've been ignoring it lately. I like informing myself with the past, but last I checked it was wrecked with high cholesterol, male breast cancer, obesity, so I'm feeling this hypertension where all I want is a suspension from what has happened so I can start off on a fresh slate. But every time I get a fresh plate of food, an image of my father runs through. If you knew me, this would be funny because my father does not run. <laughs> Our worries are internal now. How we live is in control for the most part, so don't saturate your heart with fate. I don't believe in destiny. Divine providence don't got the best of me, though providence has been divine, it's also tested me. Unexpectedly, after 18 years in church, I found myself in a position where I forgot how to pray. Hands don't fit quite right together, knees too weak when they bend. Every day and night I would begin and end with a thank you, but I've been rather rude the past few years. I'll knock. Hoping for an answer. Are you there, God? It's me, Mark. <laughs> I ain't scared, God. We have overcome adversities in the past. When I was young, I had perthies. When I say that, people usually must hear me and say, whoa. <laughs> 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 I say, no. Perthies. A degenerative bone disease of the hip joint. If you Wikipedia it, you'll note that it's typically found in young children and small dogs. <laughs> I couldn't walk, so my father carried me. I wore a big plastic diaper for support. We prayed that my right leg would have remained short in this day. The only <coughs> lasting effect is that it isn't too flexible, so I can't sit pretzel style or play hacky sack too well. <laughs> I won't forget my history, but I won't let it take over me. Maybe, maybe, eating a pound of grapes every night before bed isn't a good idea, but I can change that so my cat doesn't say I told you so. <laughs> I fear the day that I dial a medic who tells me that I'm diabetic because when I die, I want to die poetic, like, up on stage delivering the last lines of my greatest poem. But don't worry, not now, this is just my latest poem. <laughs> Peacefully with my partner, at the same time, her hand in mine, or perhaps I will die drowning in a tragic vegetable factory accident. And my tombstone will read, rest in peace. <laughs> or maybe I will die of disease, painfully and slowly. A burden to all, a part of my family history, but not apart from my family. I will study the trees and remember to pray. And as we say at home, inshallah, if God wills. <laughs>